Welcome back everyone, Sean here with Reality Forge and Unreal Engine 5.4 is released. It's out of preview, you can go ahead and update it in your Epic Games launcher. Like any Unreal Engine update, there's been a lot that's been announced. Rather than going over everything, we're going to pick a few things and cover them in this video, talk about how to get started with them, and of course, let's start that list off with motion graphics. Motion graphics mode is a lot of fun, especially if you're coming from After Effects, Blender, Cinema 4D. We've actually put together a tutorial on it as well. There's a new material designer, which is a more visual way to author materials, especially if you don't have experience creating materials in Unreal Engine. We've got a tutorial on this as well. To conclude motion graphics, you get access to all the Quixel Mega Scans for even more materials in your motion graphics. Next up is the modular control rig. Now the Unreal Engine skeletons, Manny and Quinn, come with control rigs. So when you add them to a sequence, Unreal switches into animation mode and you get these really nice controls for animation. As you can see, a completely rigged character with the inverse kinematics or the IK working just as expected. The metahumans come with their control rigs as well, which means once you add them to the sequencer, the same thing happens. You get this really nice control rig already and set up to go. The difference with the metahumans is you also get a control rig for the face. Control rigs, because of how granular they are, can become a little complex. This is an example of the control rig for Manny's body, and there's a lot going on here. After running my character through Accurig, I saw there were some issues with the weight paints, particularly around the heels of my character. But now you can paint weights and edit weights in Unreal, it's pretty cool. So this is me just going in and quickly fixing this. I wanted to include this as this is also a very important feature that's up and coming. Once you have a skeleton that's ready, right click, choose create and then modular rig. The modular rig interface is pretty easy to use. You'll have these circular kind of slots on your character on the right and you'll have presets on the left that you're going to be dragging and dropping on your character. So you can see I've done one for the right leg, one for the left leg, and then I'm going to speed this up as I add more presets to these slots. Once you're done, that's pretty much it. You now have a character that has full body IK that you can then drag and drop into the scene and everything works just as we mentioned before with the metahumans and with the Unreal skeleton. Next up is how easy retargeting has become. Simply right click on any animation sequence, choose retarget, specify a target skeletal mesh, and you're done. Select any animation on the bottom right here, and you can check if your animation was retargeted correctly. Now, if you're new to retargeting or don't know what it is, we have a tutorial explaining the entire process as well. Next up is motion matching. Motion matching analyzes the character's trajectory and then from a database of several animations, picks the animation that best fits where the character is heading automatically. A sample project is coming out later this year with 500 high quality motion matching ready animations. That isn't out yet and if you can't wait, we have a tutorial explaining how to get the basics up and running. There's a new really powerful tessellation feature for Nanite. To explain better, this is a landscape using a Quixel Mega Scan, and all of these surface details are coming from its normal map. This is the same landscape with Nanite Tessellation, and you can see a lot more detail on the surface that's being driven by those displacement maps that Quixel gives you. And since none of this is baked in, you can make changes to this in real time. So I've got this mud material here that I've painted and erased a portion of, and it's completely changed the look of the landscape we saw earlier. And you can actually see those tracks, the tessellation of those tracks in some of these overlays. Next is VDBs. You see that smoke and fire in the background? You can now create these simulations in a program like Embergen, bring the VDB data straight into Unreal, it looks great. You get moving shadows, it interacts with your lighting. So if you work in visual effects, either for games or linear content, say you work in virtual production, with a tool like Embergen, creating a shot like this is now much easier. You can finally render our passes now from Unreal. The new movie render graph is a really nice visual node-based workflow where you can have collections of actors on certain render layers that are then rendered out to separate image sequences. Before we move on to the highlights that don't have a visual, did you know you can right-click and dock your details and your outliner to your sidebar like this? And you can do it both ways. So you can have your outliner docked to the right and your details docked to the left. So they open like this when you need them and can then hide away like would usually happen with a content browser. Hardware ray tracing gets a boost along with Part Tracer being 15% faster than 5.3 and 2. You can now have bigger worlds because of large world coordinates on GPU. There is now a biome core plugin which allows you to define certain biomes using splines on your map. Another big one is Unreal Cloud DDC. Now this means that your DDC folder, your derived data cache folder, can now be shared using the cloud amongst your team. The DDC folder is a place where all cache data goes. So when your shaders compile, they go here. Lots of upgrades over on the virtual production side. We now have the multi-process interfrastrum, depth of field estimation, 
and VCAM comes to Android. For a full list of all the changes, head on over to the official 5.4 release notes and the Unreal Engine public roadmap. With that, everyone, thanks for watching this video. Let us know in the comments what you thought about it. Give us a like, give us a sub, and we'll see you in the next one.